All right, that's gonna have to do. Okay, welcome on in, guys. Uh, Tom is sick. Okay, so we have a lot that we're gonna break down in tonight's live. Just making sure everything is working. Okay, perfect. YouTube stream's going. Instagram is going. Yes, for those of you asking, yes, this will be saved. Zach Pack is the new beehive. I love it. Yay. Okay. We're going to be breaking. I'm going to do recaps for Real Housewives of Potomac, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We're also going to talk about the Sutton versus Rinna feud. And we're going to talk about Tom in page six and the video and what it means and what he said about Erica. Hi, Alex from Boston. Welcome on in. Okay. So first of all, we have to shout. I want to like start by giving a little shout out to Kenya. Oh, actually, while, we, while I open up my can of no filter rosé. Boom, I'm drinking I Stole Kim's Goddamn House tonight because, like I said, Tom Girardi probably stole that too. Cheers, available at nofilterwine.com. 14% alcohol by volume, less than a gram of sugar, so you'll get Liddy City, but you shouldn't be too hungover. Mm. And I want to raise a toast to Kenya Moore for killing that spot on Dancing with the Stars. She actually did pretty well. I mean, to be fair, I've seen a lot worse performances. I really have. Oh, fuck. This lighting is driving me crazy. Okay. So, cheers, everybody. Welcome on into the live chat. Welcome on in Instagram. Welcome podcast or YouTube watchers and welcome podcast listeners. If you're listening to this on Friday, it is a live broad, a live rebroadcast from Thursday night. We were live on Instagram at No Filter with Zach. And yeah, let's let's break it down. So like I said, today we're going to be doing a Real Housewives of Potomac recap, a Real Housewives of Salt Lake City recap, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills recap, Son of Versus Rinna drama, and then Tom and Page Six. But we're going to start with Potomac, Salt Lake City, Rinna, and Sutton, Tom and Page Six, and then we'll end with Real Housewives of Beverly Hills recap. So... Like I said, shout out to Kenya Moore. I thought she did great on Dancing with the Stars. I know a lot of people don't like Kenya. I think she killed it. And I was like, you know what, girl? I've seen Kim Kardashian try to do Dancing with the Stars. And mm. thank you, Les Les Ali. I thought she'd be better. Her twirl wasn't twirling. I mean, she wasn't terrible. Like I said, we've seen some really bad stars on Dancing with the Stars. Hi, Peyton from Canada. Um, just a reminder, guys, if you want to ask a question, we will do Q&A at the end so you can ask a question below. Thank you guys for the badges. Badges are on. So thank you so much for the support. I'll be sure to do some badge shout outs shortly. Love you guys. I'll do a quick shout out for the first two badges. Nanny Annie 68. Welcome on in. Thank you for the badge. And Mahari 8072. Thank you for the two badges. I love you. Thanks, guys. All right. So let's start with. Oh, yes. Erica Jane was on Dancing with the Stars. Sorry, I'm trying to not get too distracted with the live chat because I know some of you guys get mad at me when I do that. Um, okay, Real Housewives of Potomac recap. So this week's episode was not my favorite. And it was not my favorite because normally the best way I like to get through Candace scenes is by fast forwarding them or muting them. And then I'll like respond to DMs or like answer emails while her scenes are on. And then it's just on mute if I can't fast forward it. And this week it was all about Candace. And I was like, I do not need this much Candace in my life. I don't care about her music. I don't care about her music video. I don't know what the fuck Chris actually does showing up late to the music video shoot in his like chef gear. Like we need what's her face. Kelly Ben Simone to come in and be like, you're not a chef. You're a cook. You're a cook. You're not a chef. Kelly Ben Simone needs to set Chris Bassett straight. I don't know what the fuck he does, but I love Mia. I have to. We have to give Mia the crown of Real Housewives of Potomac because she is great this season. She's bringing the heat. She's asking Mama all the questions we want to know. And she exposed that Chris is not making money off of Candace. Candace is not paying him. He's making his EDD money. He's collecting that unemployment check. Homie, somebody needs to check you, boo. Because you think you big and bad. And I'm like, mm -mm -mm, no way, Jose. No way, Jose. Mm. Um, Steph, you can get the wine at nofilterwine.com. Also, sh drag me. While we're on the topic of Real Houses of Potomac, the drag me cans, this is the last week they're going to be available. So be sure to order before we sell out. Go place your order at nofilterwine.com. They're the purple cans. They say drag me. Candace's marriage no more than three years. You really think you're only giving her giving them that long? Hi, Fabby. Okay. Uh, but I love Mia. Mia is the mess that we needed. I think she's great. I adore her. I love her. Let's move over to Real Houses of Salt Lake City. Whitney is another one that I love and I adore. Whitney, 
I think is adorable. I think she is entertaining. And I loved my favorite scene from this week in Real Housewives of Salt Lake City was when she's bent over the chair and she's doing the the robotic sex move. And everybody's like, what is going on? I know that move. We all know that move. Everybody here has probably had sex at one point and everybody here knows the robotic sex move where you're just like, are you are you close? Are you almost done? Okay. Sorry, I just I have a meeting. Sorry, I, I just I have to go and you know, my my son was just in a car accident and his car flipped over five times and a burglar broke into my ex's house and then he had to ho- go have eye surgery for glaucoma. And then he crashed into a car and fell into a ding-dong ditch. Allegedly. Are you close? Are you almost done? We've all been there. We've all had that moment. At least now I know the best excuse is to say, you know, my, you know, my kid rolled his car over five times and a burglar broke into Tom's house. I like Real Houses of Salt Lake City. I think it's starting off strong. I think Jen Shaw is delusional as fuck. I think her beef with Meredith. I love Meredith this season. I think Meredith is handling the situation with Brooks and Jen very well. You can. I love the mama bear energy that she's giving us. And I know a lot of people were confused about like, well, how is it that Brooks isn't out yet? I think it's a little obvious that he's out right now. And it's like, hmm. I just feel like when it comes to a person's sexuality, when it comes to a person's identity in any sort of shape or form, like you have to allow them to do it in their own time and in their own way. And Jen definitely robbed him of that opportunity. I mean, granted, social media robbed him of that opportunity and Jen just jumped on that and capitalized that. But I see why Meredith would be upset because it's like, Jen, you're supposed to be my friend. You're in my circle of friends that I would expect you to just have a little bit more respect for my family and to not be coming from my family. I love Meredith's energy. And like, you know, I know there was a lot of conversation in in the DMs about the word twink and, you know, isn't it like, isn't Brooks technically out? Is Brooks very flamboyant? Sure. Like, but like, here's the thing. I remember being in high school and I remember being in middle school and everybody telling me that I was gay and like, hello, obviously I was gay, but like, I wasn't ready to accept that. I wasn't ready to come to terms with that. So I understand why Brooks, although 20 or 21 might still be in that sort of like headspace of like, I don't know what I am. I'm open to exploration. I think it's smarter for people to be like, I don't know. And I'm not going to define myself and I'm not going to put myself in a box and I'm not going to attach myself to a label. So yes, that should be a personal journey. I'm glad that Meredith is kind of being like, I don't know. He hasn't said anything to me. He's not ready to talk about it. And that's cool with me. I don't need him to talk to me about it. I don't need him to explain anything to me because when he's ready to do that, he will do that. And I think that's honorable and I love Meredith for that in relation to twink and whether or not, cause I know there was some conversation about twink being a derogatory term or a non-derogatory term in the gay community. Twink is like used to like describe someone that's like young and slim and like, you know, boyish, you know, usually like an 18, 19, 20 year old are like twinks. Some of us that are blessed can remain twinks into their late twenties. Um, but it's, Yes, it it can be an in, a term of endearment, but it can also be a term that's very emasculating. And it can be a term, it depends on how the word is used. And I think in the context of the show and the tweets, the word was used, uh, it, was a, it was weaponized against Brooks. And it was, you know, to, in a way, emasculate him, but also kind of just like put him down or put, you know, some sort of limitation on him and also pigeon him all into the box of being gay. I mean, maybe he's not gay. Maybe he's like, you know... He's like Gigi and he wants a a flavor of the week and he wants to be in an open polyamorous relationship. I don't know. Everyone's like I said, everyone's sexuality is different. Uh, But to to clarify with Twink, like the best way I can uh, explain it. And I know I kind of explained it when like Brandy Glanville called me a Twinkie on her podcast a few months ago in regards to the, the Kim Richards threesomes. But. I compare it to the word bitch and the word bitch can be used in a, in a positive way. Like I'm a bad bitch. And then it can also be used in like a God, that woman is such a bitch. Like it depends on the context in which the word is used. And it can be used in an endearing way, but can also be used in a derogatory way. And I think in this case it was derogatory, but I love Meredith and the way that she's coming for Jen Shaw. I love the way they're all coming for Jen Shaw. I love, except for Lisa Barlow. Lisa Barlow is not really holding her ground there. I don't think Twinkie is a disgusting word. I just think it can be used as a bad word. 
um, or as just a, a word to put somebody else down. But love my, uh, Meredith's mama bear energy. Love me some Heather Gay. And I love that Heather is like, Jen, you crazy. I wish Heather would be a little more firm with her. Um, I wish Lisa Barlow would be a little more firm with her. But we'll see what happens, especially when the feds come knocking. Mm. All right. Shall we get into the topics we all want to talk about? Let's start with Sutton versus Rena. Sutton versus Lisa Rena. Is Jen or Erica more guilty? Jen is more guilty. Erica hasn't been charged with anything. So Jen would technically be the one that's more guilty. But we'll do Q&A at the end of this. What do you think of the new Asian cast member? Oh, Jenny. I like Jenny. She's feisty. She's got lots of, like, fire to her. She's not afraid to to say it how it is, um, which I feel like is pretty standard for Housewives. But I don't know. There's like a zing to her. It's a it, like Jen Shaw is a zing, but Jen Shaw is like a zing that comes with the stinger and it like hurts and it's fatiguing afterwards. Jenny is just like a zinger with the breath of fresh air. Love and Jenny. OK, let's move on to Sutton versus Rinna. <sighs> Lisa Rinna and Sutton Strat. Well, first, I mean, it. It went to Sutton Strack because she's the one that brought it up on Watch What Happens Live about an Elton John Foundation party that she claims she invited Lisa Renna and Harry Hamlin to. And it, as it was being compared to Lisa Renna telling Garcelle that she was disappointed that she wasn't thanked or that Garcelle didn't thank Harry Hamlin for the pasta sauce. Which also dumb. And I think Lisa Rinna knew that it was dumb. And she was in a way just kind of trolling Garcelle for telling her, like basically saying like, Garcelle, your arguments are kind of silly. And so what you're going to try and say that my, so I'm going to give you an equally silly argument. Whether or not I agree with, with that, it's beside the point. But I think that's what Lisa Rinna was trying to do is she was trying to troll Garcelle. So it was compared. So Sutton was like, oh, well, you know, she didn't say thank you when I bought her these tickets to the Elton John Foundation Gala. And then Lisa Renna clapped back and she's like, hold up. Wait a minute. You didn't buy my tickets. I was invited by Elton John and I was his guest. And you asked us to sit at your table. And she's like, yeah, and I paid for the table and I paid for your tickets to the table. Maybe you didn't know that I paid for your tickets to the table, but I paid for your tickets to the table. Now, this is where I would love to jump in because my background is in nonprofit fundraising, specifically celebrity charities. OK, so I've done celebrity events, celebrity charity events for many, many years. I know how this system works. I know how the buying system works or the donor system works and the celeb side works. So I think both Lisa Rinna and Sutton are right. I don't think either of them is wrong in this situation. I think they're both technically telling the truth. So celebrities get invited to charity events all the time, and they usually get invited for free and don't have to pay for a damn thing. They get car service. In some cases, they get flown into events. Um, some charities offer up glam budget so that the celebrity can get glammed, usually in whatever hotel or whatever nearby hotel that they're staying at. It's like a full package. They do they go above and beyond for celebrities because they know a celebrity will show up, walk in front of a step and repeat, which has the sponsor logos on it. And then you have all of the press and the photographers that are going to take photos of the celebrity in front of the step and repeat. They're likely to probably do some interviews depending on how big the, the event is. And if press actually does show up and if press shows up, then it's just more exposure for the charity. But you go you go above and beyond to to provide to the talent and to the celeb. That way you can get the exposure and just the name recognition and being like, oh, this celebrity supports my charity. So I'm pretty sure Lisa Rinna and Harry Hamlin a few years ago were welcomed, were invited and welcomed with open arms to Elton John's event. I'm sure Elton John probably even had a table that they could have sat at that was for, you know, these complimentary celebrity guests. Or in some cases, I know what we used to do is we would pair certain celebrities with certain sponsors. So depending on how much the sponsor actually donated, they would get like a bigger celebrity. Like that was that was the case. I know we did a, a poker tournament a couple years ago that Lala, Lala and, K and Randall were participating in. And, you know, we would sell, depending on which celebs sat at which tables, they would get like, you know, more prominence or, you know, more celebrities at their table or whatever the case may be. So that does happen. And that's very real. And I would assume somebody like Elton John has a PR team or an event team that actually knows how to make that successful. Now, when it comes to Sutton, this is also very standard. So usually with events like this, you don't sell tickets, you sell tables. And it's because 
tickets attract a different type of demographic of people you're trying to bring into the fundraiser. And I know this is going to sound bad, but at the end of the day, it is a business and you have to make sure the business is profitable. And even if you're a nonprofit, that's not saying you're getting the profit, but you're making it profitable for the people that you're raising the money for. So you want people that are going to come in and donate. Usually there's a live auction or a silent auction. There are opportunities to donate. Usually you want to bring in, especially with a, an event like the Elton John would be running, you want to bring in people that are high high rollers, big spenders with lots and lots of money. I wouldn't even compare the events that I used to do to El- the Elton John Foundation, but like just to give you a ballpark, these people that would walk into some of the events that I used to run would spend like minimum five, but like usually 10, 20, in some cases, 30, 40 grand on a single auction experience. So these were like big spenders, heavy rollers. So in order to attract that type of crowd, you have to sell tables where they can come where somebody like Sutton Strack, who has a lot of money can come in, drop a big load of cash just to have a table at the event. Because then you're like, oh, if somebody can pay $10,000 just to get in the door, they probably have more money that they're likely going to be donating to the charity at the event, like throughout the night, giving more money, which is what you want to have a successful charity event. So I'm pretty sure Sutton bought a table. But usually when you buy tables, you're given a specific number of seats. Usually it's like 10 or 12 And when you have a number of seats at the table that you purchased, you're responsible for then providing the guest list of the attendees that are going to be sitting at your table. It's very likely because this happened a lot at our events is you would get somebody that would buy a table and you don't have an option to just buy a number of seats. You buy the whole table. So if the table seats 10, but you only come in with six, seven or eight guests, you still have empty seats at your table. That also says a lot that you couldn't fill your table. You know, there's that reputation piece. So I'm pretty sure somebody like Sutton Strack, who had empty seats at her, her table because she couldn't fill the whole table, was like, oh, Harry Hamlin, Lisa Renna, I want you guys to sit at my table. And they were like, oh, sure, we'll sit at your table. And in Sutton's mind, she's probably like, each of these seats is worth this much money because this was the total for the table. And Sutton said on Watch What Happens Live, she bought a table at the event. So In Sutton's mind, yes, the two seats that Harry and Lisa sat at were paid for because Sutton paid for those seats at her table. But did she buy tickets specifically for Rinna and Harry? Not necessarily. Were Harry and Rinna going to be in attendance regardless? Yeah. Were they likely going to find seats to sit somewhere? I'm sure Elton John had a reserve table for where Lisa Rinna and Harry Hamlin were supposed to be sitting. And because Sutton had extra seats, they ended up moving. We saw with Ramona at her charity events, they hop tables because it's clout, it's reputation, it's, you know, keeping up appearances. And I'm sure in this case, Sutton, who's been very open about uh, her reputation being a priority or important for her, Hello, of course she's going to want Lisa Rinna and Harry Hamlin to be seen sitting at her table. This was all pre-Housewives. So, of course, she's going to want to... It would be a great reputation booster for her. So, it's possible that they are both correct. That that Lisa and Harry were comped the seats at the table. And that Sutton did buy a table. So, I'm sure in Sutton's mind, yeah, she bought the seats for Harry and Lisa. But in reality, did she... Not necessarily. So what if it's for charity? Sutton just got and argumented it for the sake and is so jealous. It's mad. Oh, is she? Lizzie Grizzy. Ooh, what does Lizzie Grizzy say? Lizzie Grizzy. Am I the only one who isn't a fan of Sutton and thinks she tries too hard? Plus is hypocritical and stuck up. I have a love-hate relationship with Sutton. I, I kind of agree with you, Lizzie. I do think that she tries really, really hard to the point where it's just like, oh my God, you don't have to try so hard. Like, it's not that serious. Like, calm down. Um... And I think the only reason a lot of people like her this season is because she's coming after Erica. I think that's the real reason people like her or think that they like her or are saying that they like her because they hate Erica. And since Sutton is opposite Erica, it validates that hatred that they have for Erica. Okay, let's talk about Tom in page six because, wow, that was a lot. Oh, my God, my brother's trying to FaceTime me right now. Does my brother know I'm working right now? Okay, ready? From the top, make it drop. Let's get into it. Okay, Tom Jordy and page six. So initially, so I first saw the video at seven or at, sorry, at 6 a.m. my time in L.A. and it dropped at 7 a.m. in New York time, which was very early, a very early time to be dropping a video. And the, when I first saw it, it was very uncomfortable. 
I was very uncomfortable about it, watching it, because to me, it just, it felt so, I don't know. Like, you can see that there is a shell of a man. Okay, you guys can hear me, though, right? No mean comments. Okay, thank you, Ansley. It was bad. I agree, Box Boy Rich. The video was bad. And part of me was, like, torn because I'm like, oh, this feels really sleazy, even for, like, you know, page six. Like, I get it. They're, like, a gossip rag. But, like, did like is was it appropriate for them to post this? And then some people I know were like, oh, well, it was appropriate for them to post it because he's an awful man and he's a monster. And who cares? He What he did to the victims was awful. So who cares about what page six did to him? And I don't know. Maybe in my, you know, fractured heart of hearts I'm just like but a human is still a human and you can still be sad you can feel multiple things at once I can dislike the man and hate the things that he did and feel sadness and hurt for the victims while also seeing the shell of a man he is now and kind of being like wow this feels really fucked up like the the photographer really pushed him like at some point you can film him and sell that footage to page six but when you're filming him and the questions that he was asking him You can see as Tom was walking out of the facility and he's coming out and he's like, hey, what's going on, guys? Like, you can see that that was like a remnant of the man that he was, you know, where he saw the cameras and he saw the press and he would get excited. and He's like, I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. And that character was still kind of in there. But then, you know, as he gets closer and they're like, Tom, how are you liking the new facility? And they speak to him in a very like soft voice as if they know they're speaking to an elderly man that is losing his memory. And so they're speaking to him in this tone and he's like, oh, they're like, do you like it? And he's like, well, you know, we have some questions. And that to me is like, oh, I don't think he's even fully adjusted or fully aware of the circumstances or fully like it was he was very aloof. And so I was like, I don't know if he fully understands what's going on and I've been one of the biggest critics about Tom and his dementia and his Alzheimer's because I was I often joke that it's pretend amnesia with Tom Girardi in this case it felt really bad because then you see the reporter and he's like well did Erica know everything and Tom's like and you can see Tom kind of gets confused and he looks down and he's just kind of like not engaged because he doesn't really know what's going on and you can see that he's frustrated because he doesn't understand what the question actually is but I'm sure they brought up Erica and I'm sure he's having moments where he's wondering where Erica is because again he probably isn't fully aware of what's going on that was the impression that I got drag me if you want but that was the impression that I got is he wasn't fully in tune with what was happening he looked very out of it he looked very aloof and then when they ask him did you did Erica know everything everything and he like didn't answer right away and then the guy comes in and he's like no he's not going to answer that and then the cameraman's like no he wants to answer it he wants to answer it that's not okay because I know like I had a my grandfather had Alzheimer's and I I had to watch that and I know a lot of you guys reached out in the DMs and talked about your own experiences with loved ones that also had Alzheimer's and you talk about the dead look in his eyes and how like they're just gone and they're not there anymore and for me watching the cameraman film Tom and then be like no he wants to answer the question he wants to answer the question it reminded me of my brother and my brother Ethan has autism Not to really compare, but like in the sense to other people taking advantage of people that, you know, may not fully understand the circumstances. If somebody walked up to my brother and they were trying to bait him into answering questions, like even if like he would look and he wouldn't fully understand what's going on, but he would kind of sort of answer the questions, too. And I just think he was really out of it. And I know a lot of people think that it's fair game to treat him this way because of the awful things that he's done. And he is a monster and he's done some really awful things. This doesn't warrant, I mean, none of that warrants the like th- what we saw in that video, the way he kept pushing it. And then Tom's like, Erica knew, did Erica know everything? He's like, yeah, I, th- I think she did. The question of does Erica know everything is so vague that Tom in his state of dementia and Alzheimer's could have interpreted that in a multitude of different ways. Does Erica know I'm in a facility? Does Erica know that I'm being sued? Does Erica know, you know, that I'm living here now? Like Erica could have known anything Like he could have interpreted that question in any way, especially if he really is confused. And to go back to the part where he's like, how are you liking the place? And he's like, you know, we have some questions about it. 
you have some questions about it. That I interpreted that and that to me was like, oh, I'm still getting acclimated to this and they're trying to explain things to me. So I still have questions as to why I'm in this facility. But we're we, we have some questions, but, you know, we're we're figuring it out. You know, my therapist or my, you know, the house manager is helping me figure things out. You know, and it's it's heartbreaking to kind of watch that because it is somebody taking advantage of somebody. Like, yes, Tom Girardi said, the reporter said, did. Did what? Um, said, did she know everything? Yeah, did she know everything? I mean, we get what the, what the reporter was trying to ask. We get the point that the reporter was trying to make. We understand where he was going with it. But we don't understand how it was received, how Tom heard the question or what he thought he was answering, especially because the other man interjects and is like, no, he's not answering this question. And then Tom confusingly kind of like pops back in. And some people are like, oh, well, he looked really sharp in that moment. But as a lot of you guys explained, when you have a relative or a loved one that has Alzheimer's or dementia, they can have moments where they feel confident, where they think they understand the circumstances of what's going on. And to an extent, maybe they do. But at the same time, does that mean that they're, they understand the full scope of the line of questioning? I mean, for all he knows, he could have thought he was back in his heyday and this was a reporter coming and coming to interview him and praise him. Like, it's just, was that his lawyer or his brother? I don't think it was either the lawyer or the brother. I think it was the staff and they were probably taking him out to meet somebody, taking him out for a walk to get some airtime. Like I, I, I was under the impression that those were possibly like a security guard and somebody that were and a caretaker. This is the reaction they were counting on. Why can't people see that? Who was counting on it? You can tell that that was not, in my opinion, that was not an act. That was not a performance. Tom Girardi has never taken a damn acting class in his life. That was real, you guys. Like, I understand we want to hate Tom and we should hate the things that he has done. And he is a monster. He is a terrible man for the things that he did and the way that he took advantage of people. That still doesn't mean that two wrongs make a right and it warrants that type of, like that reporter was a, a pompous prick. That's the reality of it. There's a reason they dropped it at 7 a.m. on purpose. It was fixed the day before they got what they wanted. Interesting. He fooled people for decades. He didn't fool people by pretending to have amnesia. He lives in a fucking assisted facility center. Like, you guys really think that he's faking all of this? Where's the court case? What court case? If you never had dementia or TBI, a traumatic brain injury, in your life, don't speak on it. I think that's a great point, Susan. Unless you've been affected by it, agreed, Zach. And I'll be the first one to admit I never believed his illness. I didn't believe it either. And the people that have listened to this podcast loyally know I did not believe him. I did not believe that he actually went there. You're right about the reporter. It wasn't cool. It, you're taking it. And to me, it reminded me of my brother. And I was like, if a reporter came up to him and treated him that way, I would be fucking pissed off. Because when somebody's not in their sound, in their right mind, and they don't understand the full scope of what's going on in front of them, it's fucked up because you're fucking with somebody that is now vulnerable. Um, I know a lot like my grandfather. Yeah, my grandfather, I remember my grandfather dying of Alzheimer's and seeing how it affected everybody around him. Assisting live, assisted living is better than jail. Is it? I mean, I get, uh, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, but when you hear about the stories of what they do to people in assisted living facilities, I don't think it's that much greater. Don't feel bad about having an opinion on the Zach. Everyone does. You just speak yours and that's it. Yeah, but mine comes out to a lot of people and then a lot of people get mad at me for mine. Everyone's entitled to it, but not everyone has a podcast where they can share. Um, Drag me, Monique. If he is faking it and it comes to light that he is faking it, it will truly be the scandal of all scandals. I agree. Oh, the Ron Ronald McDonald ran with it. Or Sorry, I shouldn't. you guys need to not call him that because I don't... He gets mad at me every time I call him that. And I don't mean to call him that. I'm just reading your comments. But I secretly low-key love that you still call him that. He t Even Ronald Richards tweeting is like, this doesn't mean anything for Erica. This doesn't mean anything, period. And I was a little surprised because usually Ronald Richards is very much a part of like the, oh, you know, let's, let's burn the bitch at the stake because, you know, this is going to get me pressed. Like, I was surprised to see him take a different approach and have a different tune with the whole Page Six video. I was expecting... Ronald Richards to really nail Tom and Erica 
with that video. And he didn't. He's like, it doesn't really mean anything. Whether Erica knew or not is irrelevant. But it's also interesting that it's like, if, well, if she knew or not is irrelevant, then why are you analyzing her book and watching the show? And, you know, I still have other questions. But, yeah, that was shocking that he didn't run with it. I agree. I really expected him to full on run with it and to, you know, make a big debacle and scandal out of it. But I mean, I was pleasantly surprised in a good way. I was like, wow, this is, you know, I'm, I'm impressed. Kudos to you. Pat's on the back. We're on the same page. I didn't think we would find ourselves on the same page, but yeah, he seemed thrown off by the video. Well, he did seem thrown off by the video because he was the one saying that Tom was never living in the assisted facility center. And I went on that train too. I was like, I don't think Tom's actually living here. This looks like a publicity stunt. Like, you know, and it could still be partially a publicity stunt in terms of bringing the media and arranging from when Tom's going to be walking out the door. Like somebody could be orchestrating that. However, I don't believe that Tom's behavior was orchestrated or performed not even to like, any degree. Like, I know some people are like, oh, well, he seemed really out of it until the very end where he dragged Erica and he's probably loving dragging Erica. I don't even think he loves dragging Erica. To be honest with you, I see an old man that's deteriorating that still loves Erica. And I think he still cares about her and is probably still confused and hurt that she even left him. Side note, can you do an eyebrow tutorial? Oh, sure. That would be kind of fun. Nessa, baby, remind, slide into my DMs and remind me. I would love to do. I want to get my eyebrow guy on an Instagram live to do it with me. I had my Botox guy come on and talk about, you know, how to get a little non-surgical brow lift. Mm -mm -mm. He wasn't performing at all. Page six wanted him to say anything that they could possibly use to frame it in a bad light for Erica. I agree. And they were successful at it. And I think it's unfortunate because you're now taking advantage of him. I wonder if that was his brother. I don't think it was his brother. I think there were people that worked at the facility. His his physical condition matches someone in declining health. It does. And it's possible that all of the stress of everything and the worry and the losing his wife and all these lawsuits coming out, it's possible that that exacerbated his condition. Um, but I hate saying that I think what page six did was wrong. I hate saying that because I don't want to defend Tom in any way, shape or form. He's a monster. He's an awful man. The things that he did were terrible. He doesn't deserve my defense. However, how do you see this ending? Um, it's a really good question. Do you believe Tom has a girlfriend? Okay, we'll do Q&A at the end, guys. I still want to break recap Real Houses of Beverly Hills for you. Um, do I believe Tom has a girlfriend? Not anymore. Um, how do you see this ending? Tom dying in the assisted living facility. He's going to rot in there. Um, losing his mind and not understanding what's going on, which, you know, is a little sad. You can feel bad for the monster deteriorating. It's okay to have more a multitude of feelings here, guys. We're humans. Um, and then for Erica, I see her having to pay a lot of money. I see the IRS getting involved. I see them coming after her for a lot of money. I see all of anything he ever owned being completely liquidated to pay off as many people as they possibly can. I see a lot of the victims, unfortunately, getting left out of pocket without having any sort of closure to their situation. I see Erica losing everything that Tom ever gave her and having to probably rebuild her own life. I believe she will do that, but she's going to have a lot to pay for a long time. I see the sale of his house and his belongings. He lived his days out. Yeah. Yeah. No money left for the victims. She looked quite happy in Vegas. I mean, she has to work, you guys. It didn't look like she was up there partying. You didn't see like paparazzi photos or social media footage of her partying. Obviously, she was in Vegas with the other girls, but you don't see them all together partying together. Those were very much promotional photos taken by a professional pr photographer to promote the opening of the sushi bar. Okay, let's talk about Erica will rebuild. I am team Erica have been since team one. Wow, officially, Susan, that's a bold position to take. I'm not team Erica, but I'm not not team Erica. I'm team, let's see where this goes. I'm here for advocacy for the victims. I agree. We need to advocate for them more. I'm glad to see Ronald Richards 
changing his tune a bit. Hopefully he can find something that can help them. I hope more attorneys get involved and try to help and fight for these victims because I think a lot of attorneys right now are in it to make a name for themselves or to make money for themselves. And I don't like that. So I hope that some there are some lawyers out there that are willing to help these victims because they really deserve all of the help. I don't think Erica needs help. I think she'll find a way to pick herself back up. Um, and whether she can or can't or does or doesn't, like that's completely irrelevant to the fact that the victims are the priority and should definitely, you know, get the help that they need. Okay, shall we recap Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Beverly Hills, that's where I want to be. Okay, so love Kathy Hilton. Kathy Hilton is great. I think Kathy Hilton is hysterical. I loved that she didn't know where her phone was and then she didn't know where her purse was. And then the lady, the lady didn't put the phone in the bag in the car. And Kyle's like, who's the lady? And she's like, the lady, the lady that works at my house, that lady. The fact that she doesn't know the name of the lady like is awful, but hilarious at the same time. It's also interesting because I feel like people are praising Kathy for that moment, but like they would be dragging Ramona for that same behavior. I feel like Kathy and Ramona, whether you want to agree or believe it or not, I must speak some facts. Kathy and Ramona are very similar, which is part of the reason I think we don't need to make Kathy a full time housewife because then we'll end up hating her the same way we've now hated Ramona. Just saying. Just saying. If you listen to some of the things Kathy has kind of said, especially in response to Crystal and Garcelle, some of the comments she's made, some of the behavior she's exhibited, I think they're very similar. They're just the East and West Coast versions of each other. Ramona's probably a little bit worse. I'm gonna give I will give her that. Ramona's a little bit worse. But I love Kathy and I agree. The lady needs to get fired because the lady did not do her job. I was living for Kathy. I was living for that moment. I need a lady. That's all I, I, I know. Is I need a lady because I was thoroughly entertained and I want a lady that can like put my bag and my stuff places. But like if you think about it, like somebody like Kathy would be totally disoriented because if somebody's always doing something for you and then in the end they're not doing anything for you, like it's, you know, you, you get a little disoriented and you don't know how to do things and you forget you, what houses you have in La Quinta. I love Garcelle. I have always loved Garcelle. I loved her last season. I love her this season. Um, I haven't loved all of her behavior, but I love Garcelle and I loved her very much this episode because we saw a very vulnerable side of her. And I know that a lot of people are like calling out, oh, well, the only reason she was vulnerable is because the other girls bullied her into it and they're mean girls and they bullied her into crying and then they felt better because they made her cry. It's like, well, Garcelle wasn't really opening up if we're being honest. Garcelle was shading the other women a lot. She did kind of distance herself from the other women. And she did kind of put a wedge between her relationship with the other women who have a pre-established relationship already. So I think there is something to be said that, you know, Garcelle wasn't the most, I mean, not to say it like granted when there's a new person coming into the group, you should kind of as the original members of the group, you should be a little more open armed because anytime a new person comes in, it is a little challenging, but I look at it and I'm like, well, Crystal didn't have any trouble acclimating into the group. Like Crystal was kind of a natural organic fit and Crystal seems to be getting along with everybody and she seems to be welcomed into the group. Sutton for the most part too has had moments where she's in and you know, maybe she's gets a little out, but like Sutton for the most part, I don't think has ever felt like an outsider or felt uncomfortable with the group either. And I know Garcelle, kind of tried to talk about it. And I think her experience is very valid. You know, she talks about how it's not about race, but at the same time, she does have an experience as a black woman in America. And so there, she's always felt like an outsider. And I respected that. And I think that's a very honest and real vulnerable side of her experience in her life that she hasn't shared with the other women. And to an extent, how would they know if, if these aren't conversations that are being had, how is either party supposed to really know? And so I think I liked, I know some people felt that Garcelle was bullied into breaking down, but I liked that we got to see her be vulnerable and open up because we get to experience that with the women and understand it better. And then we get to experience that with Garcelle and kind of be able to hold space for her to share her experience and to be able to understand it a lot better. 
we talked about this on your pod. Yes, we did. We did drag me, Monique. We did. We, that was a great episode. Did you see Sutton and Gar and Erica patching things? Do you see Sutton and Erica patching things up? I do. I believe there will be some mending by the end of the season at the finale party, which is Crystal's Chinese New Year party. I believe there's some closure that comes out of the reunion. Um, I think all of them are in a fairly good place, to be honest. There's so much to date here. I have so much to say on this. I bet. Um, anything else? I, okay. Okay. We also have to give a shout out to Sutton. Because when Sutton was rolled into Garcelle's room in this episode, it was genius. It was gold. Also very Ramona. It was just hilarious. Like there were so many funny moments, like getting the 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 lady moment and getting the, you know, Kathy being like, all right, so dinner's over and it's 1130. Who's going to come back up to my room to have a coffee? And everyone's like, what? A coffee at 1130? Girl, you crazy. She's like, or tea. That's why I got a big suite for all of us to like come and hang out. Like girlfriends, it's a girl's trip. Girlfriends, let's braid each other's vagina hair. Hilarious to see Sutton getting wheeled up to Garcelle's room. I thought it was great. I thought it was so dramatic and so extra, but in the perfect housewife's way. You feel me? Okay. I think those is all my thoughts about Beverly Hills. For those of you that were here earlier, you caught the Potomac and Salt Lake City talk. You caught the Sutton versus Rinna stuff. Tom Girardi stuff. Is it time for Q&A? Should we do some Q&A? Reminded me of Vicky always being her. Oh, God, Vicky. Guys, I'm almost done with my first rosé. Oh, wow. I straight up said my first rosé because you know I'm going to have another one. <laughs> Oof. Should we do after party tonight, you guys? Are we doing an after party tonight? Can't wait for next week. Erica yelling to Sutton and Garcelle. I hear you. Oh, that looks juicy where they're talking about her. And then she's like, I can hear you guys. And they're like, oh, oh my God hilarious um okay maybe we'll do after party tonight questions okay let's pull up the questions and see what you guys want to know okay bitch i'm casper how do we feel about rinna finally going in good question i think this is classic rinna i'm i don't know because it's like part of me also kind of wants to i miss rinna in the sense that i wish she were holding Erica a little more accountable, a little more to the fire. I understand why she's not. She's really close to Erica. Erica's obviously talking to her off camera and sharing details about the case legally that she's not going to be sharing on the show. Um, Rinna definitely seems to be a confidant for Erica in a lot of this, so I can understand why she's not coming after Erica as hard. I wish that she would, but I can understand why she isn't. I liked seeing her kind of get big. I feel like... I don't know. I didn't love that she like really kind of went in on Garcelle, but I also understand like Garcelle was saying like these women are picking fights. Like she went in the press and made a very bold statement that the women were coming after her this season. And then that was all the press that the women were being mean girls again, and they were all coming for Garcelle. So I understand why the women would be a little peeved by that. But I like seeing Rena back. I like seeing Rinna in action. I love when she's messy. Okay, one sass mom, one sassy mama. Actually, they don't understand had both parents died of complications. Oh, 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 oh. Actually, they don't understand. Okay, I think you're saying other people don't understand because you've had both of your parents that have died of complications with Alzheimer's. First of all, I'm really sorry to hear about your parents. Losing a parent is a very heavy and traumatic thing to experience. So I just want to hold space and say that I'm very sorry to hear that. Alzheimer's is very hard to lose your parents too. So that breaks my heart. And I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. But I know you're stronger because of it. And I know that they're probably watching over you and loving the life that you're living as long as you're loving it. Anna. and Anna. Anna Inya Gua. Tom answered in the wrong tense. They asked, did she know anything? And he said, I think she does. Right. Which I think also kind of goes into, I think she does know that I'm in, that I'm here. I think she does know what's going on. Did she know about the legal stuff? I don't even think he was fully aware or present of that in his, you know, state. 
Katie Lynn 25 thoughts on the couple dinner with Dorit PK and Kyle and Mauricio. Um, I think I talked about it a little bit last week. I thought it was hilarious from a reality show point of view. I thought it was really funny and I enjoyed watching it. I love hi Mauricio. I feel like PK was just waiting for his opportunity to lay into Erica ever since Pantygate when she really embarrassed him about that and made him seem like a Harvey Weinstein gross pig of a man. And so I think he was just waiting for the opportunity to return the favor. And this was his opportunity and he's jumping in on it and he's jumping in hard. I can understand why Eric would be upset by that. I was kind of disappointed that Kyle, like Dorit has for the most part shown her cards, but Kyle's the one that is trying to play both sides, but like is really kind of sitting and trying to play Switzerland, but like is really playing too hard to eat to both of each sides. So Kyle was a little bothersome in that for me. If you don't want to add me, I'm going to go live on my account. What? If you don't want to add me, I'm going to go live on my account. You are. I want to add you. My, I feel like I have added you, Mike. Mike, you're always telling me about your DMs, but you never respond to my messages. Want to add me? Let's chat. I have questions on all of this. Let's set up an Instagram live, Mike. Mike Lush. Mike Lush is a cutie. I would not mind setting up an Instagram live with Mike. It's better than the options that I have. Liddy City Afters. Yes, a Liddy City After Party. You know what's going on later, Box Boy Rich. You know. Giveaway No Filter Wine on my page. Yes, Bravo Housewives has is giving away um, a 12-pack of my wine. Go to at Bravo Housewives, giving away my wine. 12-pack is happening. So if you want to win a 12-pack of my No Filter Rosé, go to at Bravo Housewives. I was hoping to come on this one. I have Erica Jane questions for you. Ooh, I haven't taken a live caller. I stopped taking live callers because people were literally, um, people were literally calling in on the toilet. Like it happened like three times that people would call in and it was by accident. And then I would answer the call and then they would be on the toilet. Um, the reason I don't take live calls in this live though is because we're recording it for the podcast and we're recording it on YouTube. And so the mic isn't connected to the phone. We will set one up, Mike. We'll set up a, we'll set up, we'll set up an Instagram live where we can chat about these. But, um, he looks cute. He is cute, right? Mike looks cute. Mike Lush. Everyone should go follow Mike. Slide into his DMs. Mike, are you single? Um, but the reason I don't take live calls anymore is because, It is live, and so the mic and the stuff aren't connected, so it won't pick up my audio, or it won't pick up your audio, sorry. Take them, take them, take them. Take who? Who are we taking? Where are we going? I'm ready. Ooh, interviewing Meredith Marks. I love it. I would love to. I love Meredith Marks. I think she's supposed to be coming on my podcast soon. Oh, I don't think I was supposed to say that yet. Um, Okay. Any questions, thoughts, feelings? Oh, Mike is single, guys. Slide into his DMs. Now I feel like, where is everybody at? I feel like now I'm just having a one-on-one conversation with Mike Lush. Mike Lush is getting a lot of shout outs right now. Mike Lush. I hope people slide into your DMs. Oh, mama mia. Here I go again. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Kyle and Erica moving forward. I think they do move forward. I think there's a lot of closure after the reunion. I think there will be a lot of closure. Thoughts on Mary Crosby tweets about Whitney Rose. Watching while you work. Lush is making you blush. Um, Lush hasn't even hit on me yet. I just get unsolicited inappropriate DM videos. DM videos? Oh, my God. So I shouldn't send you one of me in the shower? Um... Thoughts on Mary Crosby's tweet about Whitney Rose. I think Mary pulling the whole I don't know her card is hilarious. I think, dare I say, I'm actually growing to like Mary Crosby. Like, I feel like I'm actually starting to like her and I hate it. I hate it. Kathy, okay, yes, Box Boy Rich. Let's talk about Kathy in the the tablecloth because... From what I've heard, let me see if I can pull this photo up for you guys. Kathy Hilton table cloth. So she was at the Children's Hospital event at the Abbey in West Hollywood. 
And apparently she was really hot. And so she like took off her dress and like her assistant made her a dress out of the white tablecloth that was there. And that's literally what she fucking wore. And she explained it in an Instagram live today. And we saw that she was with having dinner with Kim and Kyle. And I was like, oh, my God, legends only. OK, literally look at this, though. She's in a tablecloth like that's literally a white tablecloth that her assistant took off of the table and turned into a dress for her. And she walked out in that. Like, who does that? Truly, though, who does that? I think it's fucking hilarious. And it's all the reasons I love Kathy Hilton. God, you guys, now I'm getting I'm like Liddy City right now. Whoo, messy Mary. Yes, Mary is very messy. Anything else you guys? Um, and it was just on page six, I believe. Yes, it was. It is on page six. She's hilarious. I love Kathy. Kate Chastain said it was a toga. It does look like a toga. Let's talk about the truth of dementia. And Tom's video was effed. We talked about that twice, actually, because the, the first time it didn't catch the audio and I had to retape it all. Some want that kitty city. Ooh. Nobody wants my kitty city. I'm still a single AF. She couldn't get someone to buy her a dress. She was at the, the restaurant. There, where are you going to buy a dress when you're at the Abbey? It's not like the Abbey has a gift shop that you can go and get a dress from. It's a sarong. No, it's a straight up tablecloth that she like wrapped up. I don't know. Her assistant did some fancy stuff and I was impressed. The lady should have brought the dress. The lady probably forgot to pack the dress and that's why Kathy had to turn a tablecloth into a dress. I got the impression that Erica still loves him. Erica definitely still loves Tom. And if you listen to my interview with Dr. V, we get into that about how, you know, like they were married for 20 years. Like naturally there's going to be some sort of care there even if she said like even if I can't be married to him that doesn't mean that I still don't care about this man being taken care of thank you guys for the badges tonight I'm so grateful Ot Ot fall thank you for three badges Ot fall Nadia B Davis thank you Nadia B Davis for the two badges Farer 1616 thank you I'm so grateful for these badges you guys I love all the support that you show me week after week. It is always a good time. We always have fun in the lives. It is F-U-N fun. Oh, my God. Okay, we just got a lot more questions. Okay, uh, Nessie, Ness Baby 22 do you like Faye Resnick? Not particularly. She's kind of, I don't know, a little stuck up for me. Wait, love, how do you feel about people compare your opinions to those of other podcasters and YouTubers when it comes to Erica? How do I feel about people who compare my opinions? Um, not very much. I don't feel anything about them, I think. I don't, um, in relation to other podcasters or YouTubers, I let them do their thing. I don't compare myself to them at all, to be honest. Um, I think I have a very polarizing, different opinion. Um, it's probably why I get a lot more of the hate comments, especially in relation to Erica than some of the other podcasters or YouTubers. I think they're all playing a very, or not all of them, but I think a lot of them play a very safe game and they're hating on Erica because it's the easy choice to make. It's a lot harder to stop and try to look at things objectively and analyze the situation as a whole versus like, listen, if I wanted cheap likes and easy comments and a ton of five-star reviews on iTunes, I would be dragging her every single week. All I can do is operate from my own level of consciousness and be honest about how I feel analyzing this stuff as it's breaking. Um, and it's just not in my nature to hate people and to rip them apart. I understand that maybe I've done that to people in the past, but in comparison to other YouTubers and, and podcasters that have a differing opinion, I don't think much of it at all. I don't, I stay in my lane. I let them do their thing. A lot of them are great at what they're doing. I'm doing my own thing. Um, and how I feel about people that are comparing us. How many fucks do I give zero, 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 none, not one? You can compare us all day. We're all still going to wake up and do our thing. Don't compare us. Just support us. Support the ones that you like and don't support the ones that you don't like. But don't compare us. That's not really fair. Thoughts on Girls Trip Vacation 2. Okay. Ultimate Girls Trip. Yes. Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip with Dorinda and Brandy and... Uh, Phaedra and Eva and Jill and who else is on it? Tamara and Vicky. 
I cannot wait. I think it looks great. I looked at the photos. Um, it seems like they were all staying in the Berkshires. I don't believe they were staying with Dorinda. I believe there was something that I heard. I don't know. I guess I let me confirm details before I reveal stuff because I don't like revealing bad tea. But I haven't heard much about it. I'm pretty sure I will hear it a little bit more now that it's finished filming. I don't know if they're going to wait until July 2022, which is the rumors when it's going to air. I think that's way too long. Why are you going to wait that long? Release it soon. We need it quick. It should not take you a year to put out content. Get it together, Peacock. I'm excited for part for vacate for the second vacation for the season two or however they're referring to it. Thoughts on Erica dating Michael Gohan. Gogan. Gohan. Gajan. Gojan. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, he's the guy from Las Vegas. Yes. I think that it's very possible that he is dating or that they have a very close relationship and he may be the sugar daddy because he's the one that owns the restaurant that she and Tom used to frequent, right? So he's like a long-term friend. I'm pretty sure if those rumors, if I mean, where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm pretty sure there's some truth to those rumors. Thoughts on Dorit on the, oh, talked about the couple dinner. Um... Let's see. Thoughts on Jill Zarin? Um, I don't know. I think she's done. I'm over her. Don't really care for her. The next no filter wine can should be the lady. That would be fucking hilarious. I don't know what the next. I don't know what's. I Potomac ends this week. Um, maybe we'll do. Well, I don't know. Maybe let me know. Should we do a Salt Lake City wine? Should we do a Vanderpump Rules wine? You know, the fall is coming up, so we may do something. We shall see. Why does Kyle, okay, Taylor Tot, Tater Tots, Tater Tots. Why does Kyle only call out Erica in her confessionals and not to her face? I agree. Kyle's being very two faced. Kyle's being very two faced. Yeah, but Zach's are better. I'm, mine are better. What? What am I better? What am I better at? Naomi again on Southern Charm. I think that that's going to be juicy now that she went through her breakup. Some people were saying that Paige was a little worried because Paige is going to meet Craig's family. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but God, would that be juicy? It's Miss Juicy, baby. Is anyone watching the pl- or planning to watch Kenyon Dancing with the Stars? I saw a clip of it. Um, I saw a clip of, of her dancing. I thought it was a lot better than I was expecting. I, w- I mean, I didn't have much expectations for Kenya, but I thought she did a very good job. All things considered. Okay. Anything else? You can do a Shaw amazing wine. Yeah, that'll be the fucking day. A Shaw amazing wine. Could you imagine? Oh my God. Mia dragging Candace is funny. I love Mia. Mia is a queen. Oh my God. Yeah. Mia dragged Candace about the feet, <laughs> the dry feet. Yeah. She's like, I may have big feet, but at least I don't have cracked feet. All right, guys. I don't know if we'll do another Beverly Hills can. I feel like we already did. We already have a Beverly Hills can. I stole Kim's goddamn house. We would probably create. Well, I don't know. We may do something fun for the holidays. I don't know. It's all still up in the air, to be honest with you. But if anybody wants to buy the wine, it's available at nofilterwine.com. See, if you want more expansions with the wine, you have to actually go and buy the wine. Because if the sales continue to perform really well, then that means it gives us more reason to want to create more wine. So please continue to support the wine. Do you believe the rumors of Kenya not returning to Real Houses of Atlanta? No, I don't. I've never even heard those rumors. I heard the rumors of Portia and uh, Cynthia not returning, but I have not heard about Kenya. Russ, your pro pick and name is Fire. We need an after party. Okay, is it time for after party? I need it here in Australia. I wish we could ship internationally. Maybe one day. I would love to ship internationally. But as of right now, we're not even in all 50 states. I believe we're in like 46 states. So will we ever see Dallas come back? I hope not. I think Dallas is done. I don't think we ever need to bring that back. Sorry, not sorry. All right, guys. Um, Thank you for tuning in to this week's Instagram Live. We will be doing an after party at Just Plain Zach. So you can go over to my personal account. I'll pop them there. I'm already one wine deep. I'm going to crack open a second one. So we're going to have some fun. Can you do a non-alcoholic wine for us on the sober bandwagon? Countess Luann, is that you? 
Is that you, Countess? Um, thank you, three sisters, one, two, three, for the badges. Three badges. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Please keep the badges coming. Um, I'm really excited. I got this new Foria sa- CBD sex oil that, that Kyle gave, Kyle and Mauricio gave to Erica. And so I got it and I can't wait to try it out. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um, if anyone wants to try it, I linked it in stories today. But yeah, go to nofilterwine.com, support the wine. We do book club every Tuesday. We're breaking down Erica Jane's book. We already did chapters one through three. And this week we broke down chapters four, five, and six. Next week we'll be doing seven, eight, and nine. So if you haven't gotten a copy, Make sure you get your copy. If you need a link to buy it, I will send you a link. Or you can borrow a copy. You can borrow it from a friend, lend it from the library, use an old copy, buy it secondhand on Amazon, whatever you want to do, however you want to spend your money, you do you, boo. Um, But we do do book club every Tuesday nights live at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. We go live here on Instagram every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Eastern. It's always a good time. We always have fun. All right. After Party is happening at Just Plain Zach right now. So for those of you that want to hop over to After Party, go head over to my personal account. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell notification button. That way you're always up to speed when there is new tea to be spilled. If you're listening to this on iTunes, I would really appreciate a good five-star review. I really would. There have been a lot of one-star reviews um, from the Erica haters out there. So if you are listening to the podcast and you are enjoying the podcast on iTunes, please give me a five-star review or just a good, honest review. That's That's all I need. Love you guys. Appreciate you all so much. Thank you for the badges. Thank you for supporting the wine. Thank you for supporting me always. Ciao for now. I will talk to you over at Just Plain Zach. Time for some after party. And you know I don't save the after parties. So whatever you get in after party is what you get in after party. They aren't saved or recorded anywhere. So I can't be dragged for them later. Oh, thank you so much. Good Lord, Lori. All right. Pop it on over. Talk to you guys over there. Ciao for now.